this video is going to have a look at calculating compound interest using the compound interest formula. So the compound interest formula is A equals P in brackets 1 plus I to the power of N. So let's have a look and see what each of those components are. So A is going to be the total amount that we have at the end of the time period. So it's probably the first thing to be aware of when we're using the compound interest formula that unlike the simple interest formula, it doesn't calculate your interest, it calculates the total amount you have at the end of the period. So that's going to be your principal plus your interest amount that you are calculating. P is going to be your principal amount, so how much you are starting with at the beginning of the investment. I is going to be your interest rate, but it's important to remember that it's your interest rate per period. So that's going to be a really important part of getting the calculation correct because you're not always going to be compounding annually and you're always normally always given the interest formula per annum. So if you're compounding quarterly or compounding monthly or compounding daily, you need to make sure that you are including the interest rate per period into that calculation. And we'll have a look at that when we have a look at our examples to see how we make that adjustment. And then our n value at the end is the number of compounding periods. So similar to our interest rate, this is another important element of the calculation to be getting correct. So what it means by number of compounding periods is the number of times it's going to compound over the total period of time. So if we were looking at two years, if we we're compounding annually, it'll just be two. If we we're looking at monthly, over two years, there's 24 months, so it's going to compound 24 times. So again, when we have a look at our examples, we're going to go through and you'll see how we can incorporate that into the calculation. But it's just mindful to be aware that one of the common mistakes in using the compound interest formula is getting the interest rate or the compounding number of compounding periods incorrect because we're not adjusting for the number of times per year that we are compounding. So our compound interest formula is A equals P in brackets 1 plus I to the power of N. So the total amount equals the principal times 1 plus the interest rate per period to the power of the number of times it's compounding. So let's have a look at how we can use this compounding interest formula to calculate compound interest. So to show you how to use the formula and how different compounding periods impact on being able to use the formula. There are three examples exactly the same on the screen, but each of those are going to have a different compounding period. So in each of the examples, they're investing $10,000 into a bank account, earning 6% interest per annum, and it's for a period of three years. So first we're going to have a look at how to use the formula if we were compounding annually. So I like to start off by working out what my P, I, and N values are going to be. So my P, my principal, my starting amount is going to be 10,000. My interest rate is going to be 6% and as a decimal that's 0 0.06. And because it's annually I don't need to do any more adjustments to that. So it stays at 0 0.06 and the number of times it's compounding is 3. So it's compounding three times at the end, of the end of each year. So when we're using the compound interest formula for compounding annually, we don't need to be going and making any adjustments to our interest rate and the number of, of compounding periods. It's just going to be 0 0.06 and 3. So I can now start off by writing the formula. So A equals P 1 plus I to the power of N going in and substituting in my values, so 10,000 times by 1 plus 0 0.06 to the power of 3, and that's going to get me a value of $11,910.16. So just remembering that that is the total amount of the investment over the, over the three years. It's the $10,000 that is invested plus the $1,910.06 interest that they would have earned. So this question is asking us for the investment amount. So we leave it at $11,910.16.
But if the question was asking you for the interest amount, you would then need to go ahead and subtract your starting amount, your $10,000, from that $11,910.16. So that's an example of how we can be using the formula to be calculating compound interest when it's compounding annually. So let's have a look now when it's compounding quarterly, because this is when we have to start making some adjustments to our interest rate and the number of years. So our P, our principal, is going to stay the same. It's going to be 10,000. Now our interest rate, we're starting off with 0.06, which is our 6% as a decimal. But this time we are compounding quarterly. So compounding quarterly means we're compounding four times per year. So I want to divide my interest rate by four. And I'm not going to work out what 0.06 divided by four is. I'm just going to leave it as that fraction. My N value is three years, but because it's compounding four times per year, I need to multiply number of years by the number of times it's compounding, and that's going to equal to 12. So my N value is going to be 12. So once I've got those three values, it's the same process. So start by writing down the formula. So A equals P 1 plus I to the power of N. Then substitute in the values. So 10,000 times 1 plus. This time our interest rate is going to be 0 0.06 divided by 4 to the power of 12. Now that's something that we can put into the calculator in one go. So remembering that we don't calculate the interest calculation separately. We just leave it as 0 0.06 over 4. So putting it into the calculation, it gets a total of $11,956.18. So that's how much I'm going to have in total at the end of the three years if I'm compounding quarterly. So to finish off with, we're now going to look at compounding monthly. And similar to quarterly, we need to make some adjustments to our interest and our number of periods. So $10,000 is still going to be the principal. This time the interest is going to be 0 0.06, which is 6%. But because we're compounding monthly, and monthly is 12 times per year, I'm going to divide it by 12. So my interest rate is going to be 0 0.06 divided by 12. And then our N value, our number of compounding periods, it's three years, but it's compounding 12 times per year. So it's going to be 3 times 12, which is equal to 36. So similar to the first two, once I've got those three values defined, I can go ahead and I can write the formula. So A equals P 1 plus I to the power of N. Substitute in my values. So 10,000 times by 1 plus 0 0.06 over 12. And that's going to be to the power of 36. So putting that into the calculator, that gets me an answer of $11,966.81. So that's the value if I was compounding monthly, I would have at the end of the three years. So there we can see three examples of using our compound interest formula, each one with a different um, compounding period. Um, as you can see, the more times we compound, the higher the balance you're going to have. So using the same information, compounding annually, we get $11,910. Compounding quarterly, we get more, 11,956. Compounding monthly, we get even more again because we're compounding more times during the year, so $11,967. So the more times you compound, the higher the balance and the higher the interest is going to be because your principal is being updated more often. The more times you update your principal, the higher the interest calculations are going to go. So that's an example of using our compound interest formula to be able to calculate compound interest.